Hi guys, I'm Anissa and I'm back with another video. Today it's time for another Monday Eats and I will apologize if my voice seems a little bit strained. It's because I've been dealing with a cold for over a week now. It started on Thursday last week. Last weekend it was manageable because it was just like a runny nose every time. Every now and then, clock nose, whatever you feel like. But now it's sort of moved and strained my voice a little bit and I'm coughing a lot and... Today is the first time I feel like it's getting better, but I still feel very down. <laughs> I've been sleeping so terribly over the past week and I also haven't been reading as much as I wanted to because of this. I have a very difficult time concentrating on reading when I'm feeling down uh, with a cold or with a sickness of some kind. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the, the things that I have been reading because I set myself the goal of finishing reading 1723 pages with an average 264 46 pages per day um i ended up and with that i would have finished six six things i ended up reading a total of 952 pages with an average of 136 pages per day and i finished two books and then today this morning i finished a graphic novel or manga and a Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale. So I'm going to talk about those two as well, since I've finished them today. The first thing I finished was Angel's Peak by Robin Carr, the ninth book in the Virgin River series. And this um, this specific book was about a sort of second chance, ro chance romance between a guy and a girl. And the girl, when they split up, the girl was pregnant. She didn't tell the guy, so the father didn't know that he was a father. He is went um, on to this military camp thing. Um, <clears throat> but then he finds out quite early into this book that he is in fact the father and he how much involvement he wants to do with it. But he's already decided that he wants to be a part of this girl's life again because he never forgot about her. He really enjoyed, liked her, loved her, whatever. And sort of that. And some parts of it I really enjoyed, but I, I don't like when such a big thing is kept a secret. I mean, I the father is entitled to know about this pregnancy. Um, and there were also a couple of things that I didn't like, but there, this one was better than the previous ones in terms of the romance. I kind of like the romance a little bit more um, than I have previously. And there was a, a couple of characters that were really fun to follow. Um, but I'm still giving this book a 3 out of 5 stars, but hopefully the next coming books will be better. I feel like um, maybe it's going the right direction with this series, but I'm not sure. I have one more book to read this year. I thought it was the last one, but I have one in December as well. But then next year I'm going to take a break from this series and see if I don't come back um, in 21 or something like that. The, the other book that I finished this past week was Enchantment of Ravens by Ma Margaret Rogerson. This is a, a fantasy book that I read from my TBR genre romance, romance TBR genre project thing. Um, so this is a YA uh, fantasy book that is centered around Faye and it is definitely revolving around a romance. It starts out with our main character and this actually or more or less the main couple they meet and he has to take her back to this place and she is an artist of some kind and um draws um paintings or make paint make paintings around uh, the fae and showing them th things that she sees and they're really um engrossed in 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 that um but she ends up falling in love with this fae and she's not allowed to do that it's a forbidden romance he um she can't do that because that is like um a death sentence both her and the fae um so yeah, they're trying to keep it a secret, but yeah, obviously all hell breaks loose. But I actually ended up really enjoying this one a lot more than I thought I would. I didn't know what to expect going into it, um, but I really thought that the um, author was telling the story pretty well. I am definitely interested in reading something else by her. I know she had one book coming out this year that was really hyped at one point, and I hear people saying that this one, that one is better, so I'm interested in seeing if I'm... I agree with that, um, but I definitely enjoyed this one and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. This morning I finished Scott Pilgrim Volume 2 by um, Brian Lee O'Malley. This 
series is a lot of fun. It follows Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim is living in Canada um, and he is part of this little um, indie band that is not popular at all, but he they go around playing for some minor things, events, um, and he li lives with a gay roommate and he has a um, girlfriend, uh, got a new girlfriend last uh, in the previous volume called Maroma, R Ramona Flowers, who has a lot of ex-boyfriends. That sort of <laughs> is something that he has to deal with. He has to deal with these bad, e terrible exes. That's like a main plot of the first two. And it's been quite fun. Um, he's very innocent in a way. And I like his, the way he uh, acts around other people, the way he treats other people. I really enjoy that. So yeah, I give it a four, four out of five stars again. I thought it was really fun. Um, I managed to, I checked it out again, um, one more time so I can have it for my wrap ups and then I'll hand it in. I handed in the other books that I had, so it's the only one I have from last time. And then I picked up a couple of new things from the library, but only graphic things this time around because I don't have time to read any physical books because I have so many TBR unwrappings and stuff. I also mentioned that I did read a fairy tale and if you're curious, <laughs> it is a uh, Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale from this collection. I unwrapped it in my latest unwrapping. If you haven't watched it, I'll link it up above. Um, this, uh, in this, I, for the first time ever in history, I uh, read something out of order. <laughs> so I um, went and read uh, The Little Match Girl because I love that story and I wanted to just see if I still enjoy it as much as I did. And I definitely do. I don't, I, I think it's a five stars. I just really, generally think it's so well written it's very it's not a happy story for sure it's very um um sad um but also puts a good picture on how it was back then in denmark and at that time um how poor some people were and how um yeah how unfair everything was but i think the way that he wrote the stories was so beautiful and it captured a lot of other things as well. So I'm really happy I read it. I think I might actually try and see if I can already from now uh, read one story a day because like the, the story with the little match girl uh, was only two and a half pages so like a really really short one and I think the first one is like nine pages and like they're in that frame. I think I tried to do the average and the average is about seven pages per fairy tale. Some are a little longer, some are very short. So it, do, it varies a lot and I can definitely try and get through a story um, every week, I think, uh, if they are not too long. And I like the writing. It was weird sort of reading it in English because The Little Match Girl is one I've um, reread a bunch of times. In my youth, I've re read it a lot, um, but I've also watched sort of animated movies or animated version of the story. I think it's part of one of the Christmas calendars in Denmark um, because it does roll around Christmas, but it's so sad. And I think I remember, um, I'm pretty sure it was part of that uh, because it is set around New Year's, like the last day of the year. Uh, so it is a holiday story. Um, highly recommend it if you haven't read this. This is such a short story, so it's really easy to get through, but it's very, very impactful and beautifully told. So. In terms of the books that I'm currently working, reading and working my way through, let's talk about that first. First up, I am, I don't know, 40% or something into Daisy Jones and the Six. I have about 232 pages left, if my calculations are correct. I am not super loving this book. Um, I'm a little sad about that because I loved Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo so much. Um, I'm not a big fan of the full cast audios and this is a full class audio um, and I, I know I'm very much in the minority when it comes to that but I prefer um, single or dual narratives um, over a full cast um, but I understand sort of why this one is done this way because the, of the way the book is written um, but it's more of a bi bi biography rather than a memoir kind of thing where I feel like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was more of like a memoir and this one is more of a biography of a person. I don't know. It's different, definitely. Um, 
I'm, I, I, so far I'm not enjoying it as much, but we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm not anxiously waiting to pick this up and I guess that's why it's not going as fast as I wanted it to. I'm also about halfway through Hogfather now. Um, at the time I start, I, this morning I had 294 pages left and I've read something since then. So I'm now about ho halfway through it. Um, and I just, I just marked a passage of that I just listened to um, just because it's funny. It's basically um, Death being a hog father in, this, in, in the shopping mall talking to kids and their wishes. And this girl wants a pony <laughs> and he's like, and you want a pony? Um, yes, I know that. What a naughty pig it, it was indeed. Here is a br bridle for your pony and a saddle and a rather strange hard hat and a pair of those trousers that make you look as though you have a large rabbit in each pocket. Uh, but we can't have a pony, can we, Yuffie? Because we live on the third floor. And and then Death says, oh yes, it's in the kitchen. I'm sure you're making a little joke, Hogfather. The mother said sharply, ho oh, oh, ho, yes. What a jolly fat man I am. In the kitchen, what a joke. Dollies and so on will be delivered later as per your letter. What do you say, Yuffie? Thank you. Uh, you didn't really put a pony in the kitchen, did you? I said heavy Uncle Albert as the line moved on. Don't be foolish, Albert. I said that to be jolly. <laughs> oh, right. Ha. For a minute there. It's in the bedroom. <laughs> it's more hygienic. Well, it will make sure of one thing. Third floor, they're going to believe. All right. Yes, you know, I think I'm getting the hang of this. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I just started laughing so hard when I was listening to that because it was so... Random. That's one of the things I love about Terry Pratchett, his humor, and also about um, Death. <laughs> Death is like my favorite character, and this is one of the reasons because he does things <laughs> like this. It makes me fun. It makes me laugh every time. But I'm definitely, definitely going to be finishing that soon. Um, the last thing that I've started and not finished is A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. I am on page 76 or 7. I'm in the middle of a chapter. <laughs> um, it's been a little bit difficult for me to pick this up. It's I, I like it. It's quite cute. I I think their friendship, um, the friendships in here, so far it's only not a romance, but I know that this main character is in, starting to be, fall in love with this deaf new guy that started at this school um she's a selective mute so she's not she can't really speak um she has a hard time can around to speak but she also have a good friendship with this girl called tem and that friendship is precious so far and i hope that it stays that way i hope they stay a really healthy friendship because otherwise i'm going to be sad but that's something i'm enjoying it but i'm probably just going to pick it up a little bit over the next week and see how it goes through the week because contemporary is just not the type of book that I just pick up and sit and read for 100 pages at a time. That's probably the reason why I haven't picked it up more as well as me being sick. So instead I have put The Knife of Never Letting Go on my TBR for the next week and see if I can't get a good chunk into this one or finish it. It is almost 500 pages long um, but it has slightly okay right, all right text it has a lot of chapters so it might be a quick read and it's more of my type of genre because it's more of the science fiction fantasy ish dystopian fan genre uh, so we'll see how this one goes i'm definitely planning on trying to finish both daisy jones and six and hogfather and and i'm gonna try for uh, the knife of never letting go i'm going to try and see if i can get through a couple of pages of a correct kind of thunder a day maybe i don't know every now and then um but the audio that i'll pick up after i finish stage jones and six will be symbiosis i think uh because that is the last one that is not fantasy related of my books and next week from the 22nd uh the one readathon to rule them all will start and i'm going to try and participate in that low-key ish so i'm going to use the remaining fantasy books for that so symbiosis is about 325 pages and hopefully i will like that one we'll see the last thing i've put on is just because i want something easy to read every week and this one is definitely going to be that and that is tolly or nook and Shu, which is a christmas um 
um, story, picture book kind of thing. Um, but most importantly, it is the illustrations are made by Peter Masson, the same one who does the art for the Valhalla comics that are some of my favorites. This is actually the 12th volume in the series, so it's weird that I'm picking this one up. I have reserved the first one, but I saw Kirsten from Les If My Fantasy read this at went around Dewey's and I was really in the mood to pick it up. So I went and checked it out from the library and it is just like you can tell this the, the similarities between the Valhalla illustrations and this and like it's more of a, a story because it has text so it's like if you think about the sleeping and the spindle thing with a lot of illustrations on each page but also some text but it's not a comic um that is what this is and it's like 30 pages if it doesn't have a page count but i think it's around 30 pages um so it's going to be a really quick one i might even finish it maybe tomorrow today i don't know when i'll pick it up um but i like <laughs> having these easy reads and then I also have a couple of new mangas I can pick up if I want some more easy things to pick up. So those are the things that I have been reading and what my plans are for the next week. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I've been talking about today. What has been your favorite thing that you read over the past week? And what are you currently reading right now that you're excited about? Let me know about that in the comments down below. Um, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.